Well, firefighters are working furiously to bring dozens of dangerous bushfires under control in the east coast of Australia. Roughly half of Queensland is under a state of fire emergency. And a total fire ban was issued Sunday for the neighbouring state of New South Wales. So far, at least three people have been killed, several more are missing, and dozens of people, including firefighters, have been injured. Well, officials are warning of catastrophic fire danger for New South Wales in the coming days. More now from Nine News reporter Ali Walsh. The bushfire emergency in New South Wales and Queensland is headed into uncharted territory. Where I am in Sydney, residents in the greater metropolitan area are being told to brace for catastrophic conditions come Tuesday. It'll be a very dangerous day with very hot, very dry, very windy conditions and it'll be the first time in history that Sydney has ever been met with such catastrophic conditions. As such, more than 40 schools will be closed with emergency crews warning residents to get their evacuation plans in place now. As it stands, more than 70 fires are burning across New South Wales. 150 homes have been destroyed and three people killed. Across the border in Queensland, people have also been forced to flee, with more than 40 fires burning across the Sunshine State, with dire warnings that the worst is yet to come. Well, the fires are already leaving an indelible impact on the environment. Take a look at this footage we just got in. The fires casting a surreal orange glow a few days ago. And this side by side, these pictures showing the before and after of the devastating drought there on the mid New South Wales north coast. Those photos taken two years apart and you can see that those sort of conditions have contributed to the devastating fires we are seeing. We'll see in meteorologist Alison Chincha joins us for more on that and it seems like the next few days are going to be crucial with how firefighters tackle these blazes. Yeah, I mean, they've got about the next 12 to maybe 20 hours to really get as good of a hold on these fires as they can before we start to see those winds really beginning to pick back up. And that's when it's really going to start to get dangerous, not only to trigger new fires, but spread the ones that are already there. And yes, we were talking about some of these images. Look at this. Again, this is from Port Macquarie, Australia. Again, you can see that sun. Now, here's how this works. You have the smoke particles that are in the air. And what's happening is it's scattering that light so that you end up seeing that very orange, that very vivid red color and this was a scene across many areas in this region all due to all of these fires that you can see right through here again there's a lot of them we're not just talking one or two brush fires here that we've been dealing with again when you look at some of these numbers 74 active fires right now 43 of them are uncontrolled at this time. They're hoping they can get that uncontrolled number back down as quickly as possible before these winds kick up. And this quote here, this really tells the story. We've simply never had this number of fires burn in New South Wales at the same time. That's coming from the Rural Fire Service Commissioner. Again, just to go to show you the expanse of this. Now keep in mind, yes, this is fire season for this region. Basically here from Brisbane all the way down to Sydney, you really start to see it begin around October, November and carry through into January. So that's the other concern. We have several more months to go before you really start to see an end to the fire season in this region. Here's a look at the winds going forward. For right now, for at least the imminent timeline, they're not expected to be that strong. But as this next system begins to slide in late Monday and especially into Tuesday, look at how these numbers begin to go up. This is where the concern lies because as those numbers go up, we mentioned this can trigger new fires by taking some of that brush. Even just a few sparks, small ones, can set off a new fire but more importantly it can take the fires that already exist and spread them rapidly here's a look at what we can expect the forecast for tuesday again around the sydney and hunter regions you can see we do have the potential for catastrophic fire danger looking at a lot of these different colors indicating the high risk the extreme risk or even the catastrophic levels and these are the levels that they put out to give people warning time we also talk about not only the winds going up but temperatures are also expected to rise take a look at Sydney going from a high of 26 on Monday all the way up to 36 on Tuesday and that's going to be another thing not only to spread the fires but Linda it also makes it very difficult conditions for the firefighters themselves to be working in when it's very hot and it's very dry out there. Yeah I really feel for those firefighters they are dealing with what looks to be an absolute inferno. Yes. Good to have you with us Alison Thank Chichar. Thanks so much. Well, north of Australia, Indonesia also battling fires. It has been Indonesia's worst fire season since 2015, and the destruction of the rainforest on the island of Borneo 
is endangering one of the world's most endangered species, the, orang the orangutan. Now, Ivan Watson reports. A grinding battle deep in the jungle. Firefighters on the Indonesian island of Borneo struggle to control a forest fire that threatens a national park. This is just brutal, brutal work they're doing here. Toxic smoke in the tropical heat. We are fighting here almost two weeks already. In here, stay in here, sleep in here. The rainforests in Indonesia are burning. Firefighters have been battling this blaze for weeks, and at its peak this summer, there were thousands of similar fires in other parts of the country. They're fighting on the ground and in the air. These are aerial firefighters. And right now, we're on a water bombing mission. Helicopters dump giant buckets full of water on the flames. Bombs away. Firefighters say this crisis was ignited by man. From the fire coming, I think, from the human, yeah? You think humans started this? Yes, of course. An unusually dry summer fueled this inferno, visible from space. The haze engulfed cities in neighboring countries like Singapore and Malaysia, while in Indonesia, the smog closed airports and schools, creating apocalyptic skies. Yes, yeah, sometimes it feels like science fiction. Because... This doctor saw panicked civilians flood his hospital. Indonesian authorities estimate about a million people suffered respiratory problems. Be grateful to the air that we have that is not toxic like this because not everyone can enjoy a fresh air. The forest fires also threatening one of Asia's last great rainforests, home to orangutans, symbols of an entire ecosystem under threat. This is Poppy, and she's a one-year-old example of one of the world's most endangered species. Right now, she's attending a class in jungle school. Papi. Activists from the Center for Orangutan Protection take orphaned animals and teach them to survive, and hopefully one day return them to the wild. As Borneo's rainforests shrink, the orangutan population has plummeted. The threat is deforestation, maybe because of illegal logging or like a uh, conversion of the forest to the uh, make building or something by human and also for the forest burning. These activists also rescue and relocate orangutans stranded by mass deforestation. The clash between man and nature on display when an ape confronts the heavy machinery ripping down its home. And this is what's replacing much of Borneo's jungle sprawling plantations of palm trees, Indonesia's most lucrative cash crop. Palm fruit like this makes a vegetable oil used in around half of all household products sold in your neighborhood grocery store. As palm oil exports ballooned over the last 20 years, so did the Indonesian territory used to grow palms. It's now bigger than entire countries like England or Greece. It's, it's now way out of our control in Indonesia. Even this industry insider is calling for stricter government regulation of the palm oil industry. If we just do it halfway, we should always expect this forest and land fire in the future. But this cash crop has also lifted millions of Indonesians out of poverty. People like this farmer. Before I grew palms, I couldn't even afford to feed my children chicken, he tells me. Farming palm, I've been able to buy a TV and a refrigerator. The cheapest way to clear land for farming is to burn it. The government says it's trying to crack down on these man-made fires. For us, the forest fire is a serious crime. Officials show me how they use thermal satellite imagery to detect fires to then prosecute palm oil companies. They say they've opened cases against 21 companies in the last four years. But some activists fear it's too little, too late. We, we need the price for leave, so please protect the price. Ramadani is trying to reintroduce a rescued orangutan named Michelle to the wild. But the island halfway house where she now lives is in the shadow of a growing coal mine. Yet another industry, yet another threat. 
Michelle's protectors fear that in 20 years' time, there may be no forests left for these incredible animals. Ivan Watson, CNN, Indonesian Borneo. They really are incredible. Some great reporting there. Well, it is 25 years since Israel and Jordan signed a peace accord hoping for a better future. But things haven't quite gone to plan. We're going to head to Jerusalem next. Plus, protesters in Lebanon want to see if the government makes good on a promise to crack down on corruption. We'll have a live report from Beirut.